Hey there, and welcome to my, probably going to be my last video for uh, Grand Blue in general for a while until Lucilius or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, comes out. Uh, so I feel I've like prepped as much as I can. And uh, just to show how much prep work I've been doing, there we go. I am at 10,000 quests cleared. Yes, 10,000 quests cleared. Uh, I don't believe I made any video on topic, but I had hit somewhere around 3,600 quests cleared when I finished all my Terminus weapons. And this was a while ago. This was maybe 300 hours ago or something since I finished all my Terminus weapons. So here I am giving you my final review of what launch state Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is like. So, as you probably would have guessed, I finished collecting all the main endgame materials, the gears, so all the Terminus weapons, I have them all, they're all maxed out, built. Uh, so they're all there. I've collected a ton of sigils, I've done so much saves coming, and we're gonna get into that in just a second, but I've done a ton of whatever it is you need to do in the end game. So let's start. First of all, once you finish once you get to Proto Bahama, which is the last fight in the proud difficulty, you farm Proto Bahama for your final weapons. These are the weapons that are the best that you can get. So right here, you get your weapons. I have them all. I've had them all for forever. And the first thing I didn't like when I got to this point in the game is that all the weapons were RNG drops. So it's not like you farm the fight and then you build the materials and you you craft the weapon that you want. It's not. They just start dropping whatever. So let's say you were, uh, and I make this joke all the time on the Discord, let's say you were uh, a Charlotte main. Charlotte might be your 19th weapon dropped. So all of those materials, everything that you're doing, like you're waiting for well over a hundred clears to get her weapon. So I always make the joke, the game chose a new main for you. Whatever the weapon drops, that's your new main. You're no longer a Charlotte main. And that's what I actually did, uh, unironically. So outside of a joke, I actually did switch. So I used to be a Charlotte main, switched to Rackham. Uh, if you haven't played the game, then whatever. Uh, and that's, that's what happened. So that's how I became a Rackham main at the time. And I did go dabble with other characters. Uh, if you watch the streams, I played Yoda, I played uh, Vasaraga, I played Fairy a little bit. So I did dabble and build a bunch of different characters, try them out a little bit. Uh, but just because I was so in depth in the farming, I was always going back to Rackham just because it was very easy. Go kill stuff, get the materials, keep progressing. And I did that until I finished all my Terminus weapons. So getting the weapon drop isn't enough, you have to go awaken them. But the process to awaken them isn't terribly difficult. You only really have to run four missions. So you only have to really, you only have to really go through four missions, which are the three Nihilas, Pieta, and then you have to level up all weapons in the game to 150. So the reason why all of my weapons are 150 is because I need them at 150 uh, to get the Terminus weapons to fully maxed. And the, one of, this is one of the first things that really stuck out to me as being not so great. So one is that it's the final mission in the game is where you finally start to get these weapons. You can't get them earlier. Or, I mean, you could maybe join a friend and get them a little bit earlier, but you still have to unlock Proud Difficulty, which means you're basically there anyway. So you're waiting till the end of the game, at least the end of launch state of the game, to get these weapons. But then you don't have anything to do with them, because all you can do is you take weapons from the last, literally the last quest in the game, and then you just go beat up bosses that you've previously done anyway. Uh, so you would have had to clear all those bosses anyway. The second point is, though, that I really, really want to make, is that your the game is heavily hinged on damage cap. The game is heavily hinged again? on damage cap. So... Uh, the final weapons in the game give a bunch of this damage cap. So look, damage cap plus 100%. And then you have to get uh, you have to get sigils, so pieces of equipment that raise this damage cap. 
And here we go, max of 65. So a lot of your dam a lot of your equipment slots effectively just go towards this damage cap aspect. And the reason this is difficult is because as you saw, damage cap is tied to the weapon. So the weapon provides the largest single boost of damage cap that you get. That's pretty rough. So that means that your entire playthrough, from the first time you launch the game, all the way to the final boss, the final mission in the game, which is actually tutorial to tutorial boss, it's the same boss. Uh, go figure. You have the basically the same damage cap possible to you. So at a certain point, somewhere around somewhere around maybe hard difficulty, maybe very hard, somewhere in this region, you're going to collect enough damage cap sigils, so pieces of equipment, that you're going to be at damage cap anyway. Which means that you don't your damage doesn't actually change from middle of the game, middle of the quest list, all the way to proud, all the way until you get your weapon dropped. Your damage cap remains roughly the same. Because the weapon is the biggest the biggest change in your uh, character's damage cap, which is what basically dictates every single uh, point of point of damage you deal. So I really didn't like that. So as I was mentioning, you only really farm four missions. Uh, so it's these three. So you have the three Nahilas, and then you have Piete. Piete? Or I don't know how to pronounce it. Whatever. So you farm these three, these four missions, and these are the only missions that you need to farm for materials to finish your Terminus weapon. So you have all these, you have all, all, all these bosses in the game. All of these different bosses. Now some of them are just the same bosses, different difficulties, but you have a lot of fights in the game, and you end up just fighting four of them. So once you have all 19 Terminus weapons, that's it. Your life is in these four missions. And you need roughly 10 runs of these three missions that are depending on the teams you're with, let's say three minutes each, let's say 30 minutes. Then you need another bunch of runs of Piet A, depending on the team you're with, let's just call it another 30 minutes. So let's say you spend 60 minutes per weapon just farming these set of four missions. Per Terminus weapon, your, your, each character's final weapon takes about one hour of farming these missions. That's all well, but then, but then, you need, remember, I, you have to level up all the weapons to max. And that takes a lot of fortification crystals. Where do you get fortification crystals? There's some missions like Defeat Two Griffins, Roost and Rain. At a minute and a half runs, which is relatively high end. Now, f my fastest was 62 seconds. Now, that's in-game timer, which stops when there's cutscenes. So, it's, lo it's well longer than that. But you're running roughly one and a half hours of manual griffins, double griffins, which you have to run through a map for, kill a little few stupid mobs, wait for the griffins to spawn, kill the griffins, etc. You have to run roughly an hour and a half of manual griffins per character to raise all their weapons from scratch. So your final difficult, final endgame difficulty bosses, your final endgame difficulty bosses... Let's see. That you have to farm. So Piet A is the second to last boss in the game. And then these three, the three Nihilas here, are really close to the end. They're four away from, from Proto. These you only have to farm for about an hour. And then you have to drop down a difficulty and just smash your head at this mission for an hour and a half minimum. For most people, it's an hour and a half minimum to get everything that you'll need. And you're it's, it's mind-numbing. So you don't actually get to farm a fun fight to get the materials you need. And this goes for sigils as well. Your best way to farm sigils is to farm it? slime peed, which is just, that's it. You just load into a map with slimes, and apparently this is a, uh, a common thing with Grand Blue Fantasy. Well, I've never played the original Grand Blue Fantasy game, but apparently that's it's one of the things. You farm slimes in there, and they did the same thing here. You just load into a map with a bunch of slimes, you kill a bunch of slime, and you hope for a roughly 1% spawn chance of a prismatic slime. And this prismatic slime drops you so many materials that just bypasses all this farming. So effectively, this is your best place to farm for a lot of things. Is slime peed. And then 
a, I would say I got about one prismatic slime an hour, and this finished five sigils. Characters equip up to uh, characters equip twelve sigils, so roughly two hours you'll finish a character, two and a half hours you'll finish a character for all their sigils, and then you'll have a few leftover azurites. So between slime peed, between slime peed and roost and rain. These are the two longest missions to complete a character that you have to farm, and they're both in Maniac difficulty. So let's say you've gotten past all of this. Now, every character is decked out. So every character is decked out. You know, you can run whatever you want on any character. You have the Terminus Max, you have a bunch of sigils, you have Azerites overflowing. If Azerites overflowing, I, I can make 165 sigils on the spot right now. Well, then what do you do? Well, like I said, there's no boss to go to go beat up. Now, we know that Lucifer is coming out, so at the very least, there's a sliver of hope that we're, we're all praying that it's a good fight. But there's nothing to do right now. I don't... I, I can't go and do anything. I just, I just do the same things I've always done, but just a little bit faster. And then here comes the final endgame optimizations, is that there are people like me that like completing a character, feeling like I've gotten every ounce of a character that I can get. And that's normal, I think that's normal. And there are these sigils. So one is that sigils come from two sources, technically three, um, but two of them share roughly the same draw pool. You can go and get sigils from Transmarbling, which is from Ciro. Technically, this drops 99% of the sigils in the game. And this is how obnoxious it is. Now, I don't have the volume muted, I would normally mute it. So you built up a bunch of vouchers, you sit here rolling level 3 transmutation, and every 10 level 3 transmutations gets you one transmarble. And transmarble is the juicy stuff. That's where you get maybe the slightly better stuff. But it takes long because there's no 10 roll or anything like that in this game. So you're sitting here and you're spamming one roll at a time. And the rates in Transmarble aren't great. So to give you an example, I did around five, 6,000 in one weekend, looking for one sigil, one specific sigil, and I didn't get it. So imagine if you didn't save scum, because the game still currently allows you to save scum, meaning I could roll all 568 of these. If I don't like what I get, I reset. But, and I can get a different result after resetting. That's the main part. But if, if they didn't allow you that, it, it would be insane. It would be ludicrous to me. So this is one of the optimizations is pure RNG. And you sit here menuing for hours a day because you can only hold 999 vouchers. And then here, let's see. How many, how many centrums can I sell? So all of these materials are capped here. How many of these centrums can I sell? 21 to fill up the rest of my knickknack vouchers. And I've got 999. It takes forever to menu. So you saw how slow it was to just roll half of my vouchers, and then you have to go back and forth, back and forth menuing, and then you've got all these garbage sigils that you want to sell. So you go and sell all. And you've got a lot of this garbage. So I have 3,500 sigils in my inventory. I spent the last weekend cleaning up. So like, this was two days ago, I went from 5,000 sigils down to 2,000 sigils. I did the same with my right stones from 5,000 right stones down to 1,200 right stones. And this is hours and hours and hours of menuing. It is a ridiculous amount of menuing when you're doing this many, the, the volume of quests that I'm doing. So this was really rough. The, the Sierra menuing was incredibly rough. And then... So, I, calcula I calculated 8 to 15 hours of pure menuing in like the last weekend. See, and they, they built up a lot of transmarbles. So that's one thing. That's where you get some of the uh, more sought after sigils, such as... Such as critical hit rate with damage cap, or the character's unique buff sigil with different orange lines, because generally you want to maximize as many orange lines as you can for each character. So that's where you get those. Uh, so you're going to be spending a lot of time at Sierra. The second optimization that I want to talk about is Overmastery. And this is just, this is just like Gachapon with stats. So, uh, you sit here and then you roll. Nothing good. So I'm looking for normal damage cap 20%, uh, with skill damage cap up, whatever, 20%, with, uh, ideally some critical hit rate at over 10%. That's what I want. 
And then you can you just sit here one at a time. Oh, I got the 20%, but I didn't get anything else I wanted, which is not better than my current stats. At least they don't immediately replace, and they give you the choice to replace or not. But, wow, you sit here all day, and you could... And th that's it, that's your life. You just sit here rolling this over and over and over. The bright flashes. Hopefully you're not epileptic. Uh, and you just... That's it, that's... That's the second. That's the second optimization. Is you just sit there with overmasteries and you just keep trying it until you get the stats you want. Now, uh, my Rakdom is probably my best one, and I'm still missing two stars on one of the stats. For whatever that's worth. So, make of that what you will. At least it doesn't take super long to burn through a stack of uh, overmasteries, but it's it's so rare to to min max something. I would still say this is in the realm of possibility. <laughs> And then here, this is still part of the first one. I just forgot Welcome. to mention it at the time, Which but you can get strength? stones to improve a weapon. And these stones right are stone one time use, meaning that once you drop it in, it's it, it's gone. Uh, it, you cannot give it to another character after, it's locked in forever. And these stones come from Sierra, so you get them from Sierra. And it rolls three stats, so the, the first line, so you can see on the traits in the middle, uh, there's three lines. The top line is forced to be one of four stats, but then the bottom two lines can be any, just about any trait in the game. And there are so many combinations possible, then they roll different RNG trait levels, and there's one stone to rule them out. Oh. Like... You have more chances of rolling, of pulling the one ring in in the Magic the Gathering than you do of getting a good stone in this. So the good stone would be pr either 10 crit rate or 10 weak point damage. With, the heart, not the with two That's damage cap subs of 7 be. and 5, which would be an absolute perfect stone. So 7 and 5 as the, as the second and third lines are the maximum stats you can get. And it, it, it's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to try and chase this stone. It's not possible. Uh, I went through some eight, nine thousand stones, and I've only seen a couple. This is one of them. I've only seen a few stones, around six total, where I had two of the same orange lines, and none of them were ten, seven, five. None of, none of the, like the six stones I had like this were ten, seven, five, and obviously none of them were damage cap stones because damage cap seems to be a rare stat in this game, because your whole game balance is designed around it. So this this falls under Sierra. You, while you're rolling for sigils, you're also looking for for good stones to use. Uh, but you can't really give them to everybody. So it's another thing that even if you want to try different characters at the same time, you might not have a good stone for them while you've already used your stone on your main character, the one that you always use. So it's also a bit rough on that front. But then we come into the the reason why I have ten thousand quests cleared. I finished all my Terminus weapons around six, seven thousand quests ago. So, this is it, and you come into the super rare sigils called Curio, what we call Curio Legends or Curio Sigils, and they're a specific classification of sigils that only can be obtained from this dude, from Zappa. <laughs> And you I get carryos by farming missions, or you can pick them up around the world, but they don't spawn very often. It's roughly one... It's 80% chance from a Maniac quest, 100% chance from a Proud quest to drop a Kyrio. And... Pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> rates, for, rates for good sigils are terrible in this game. To give you an example, I have a single one of these supplementary damage sigils with a sep with a substat in 10,000 quests cleared. Now, I haven't opened the 910 curios in my inventory, so I don't know. Maybe there's another one in there. So we're going to do that together right now. We're going to we're going to open it up and see what happens. But most characters run 3 supplementary damage. You do not get to choose your substat when it rolls. So if you even do get one, you don't get to choose. You don't get to choose your substat. So it might be good, it might not be good. This one's okay. Uh, there are some that are really good, some that might not even be good. Like, actually a detractor for the character. For example, there's a substat that 
aggro's enemies. So if you're playing some of the ranged characters, you might not want that. Uh, things like that. So, there are some 30 different substats they can roll. I don't believe they actually gave each one different values of what they of uh, for drop chances, but they are so rare to get these Curio Legend sigils with the substats. Um, I've gotten maybe six total, not supplementary damages, but six of the Curio Legends total, and we have a bunch of different types. So we've got less is more, roll the die, potent greens, or elemental glass cannon, berserker, power hungry. Uh, we've got Path the Mastery, Flight Over Fight, Untouchable. There, I, there's probably one or two more that I just already del already removed them from the characters. But to give you an example, that uh, oh, Stronghold is one of them. Or uh, yeah, Stronghold is one of them. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of different ones, and I've gotten six totals in 9,000 quests since I last checked. So we're gonna check here, and then I'll get into the what was good about the game. So, I spent 21 minutes ranting, you know what you we will actually talk about what is good about the game. So here is untouchable, but no substat. So you, that's what we're looking for, we're basically looking for uh, the good sigils with substats, which we know can roll, but we don't get them. They are so incredibly rare. So, so far, nothing. We haven't gotten anything. So, War Elemental is one of those very good sigils, but it's not like the not the ones with the sublines. This one cannot roll a subline, and just about every character runs this, so it is an important thing to get. But then when you're at the point where you finish all your Terminus weapons, you probably have like a full inventory of these. So... Less is more is another one of the Curio ones, but it's not plussed. Another War Elemental. See, these are all Curio, or almost all. Roll of the Die is a Curio one, Glass Cannon a Curio one, Power Hungry another Curio one. Uh, but no pluses, no, there's no substats on them. And that's what you want. You want these substats. Less is more. Another one without a substat. Head start. Another one without a substat. Another roll of the die. Not that it's any good, but again, no substat. I think we saw another less is more. Yep. So yeah, you end up just going through thousands and thousands and thousands of sigils and you that's it you're hoping to get the good ones the good substats that you want and this is so unrealistic so there was a cheater that spawned in a hundred thousand curios and opened them all and the rates were terrible the rates were atrocious so th things exist we know that they exist but the rates are so bad that to give you to have an AFK farm, which I'll touch more about just in a minute, even if you were to AFK farm missions for three months straight, you would probably not even get dupes of some of the good ones from the boxes. That's how bad it is. And so far we haven't seen any any plush sigils. So we've seen the we've seen the um, rare We've seen the rare sigils for Curios, the Curio sigils, but we haven't seen any with pluses at this point. And so yeah, he spawned in the 100,000 Curios, opened them all, saw how bad the rates are, and just said, fuck this, and yeah, he left. Like, what's the point? There's, you can't, it's not humanly possible to farm for these. Uh, so, to touch on, all of your optimizations in the end game, one is it's an RNG drop to get your Terminus weapon, and remember my point, is that once you get your Terminus weapon, there's nothing to do. You don't use anything with it. But some people still like optimizing the character, like me. I like doing that. So, I made all weapons. W whatever character I want to play, I've got a build for them. 
no pluses at all up until this point. Either I missed it or just did not happen. And so all three of the all three of the ways to get oh, oh that was the number four. I thought we got I thought we got one. We're towards the end of the 900 plus curios that I had saved up for the last three days for this video, and we didn't get a single one. So that's what your that's what this game feels like right now. It's been over a week since I, I last got a plus curio. And I've been farming proud missions, I've been fa farming maniac missions. So there we go, done. Did not get one. Something shiny. 10,000 quests cleared for one supplementary damage V+. I love a good white knight. Let me give you a voucher for him. There you go. So no plus offensive sigils. I did not get one. I did not get one. And there you go. So yeah, I ten, that's 10,000 quests. So we went through a lot of the points. Uh, everything that I can do to optimize a character is pure RNG. And the best way to, un the unfortunate part about the best way to farm in this game is to set up, think of Cookie Clicker, okay? When you start Cookie Clicker, you manually click a lot of stuff. You're, you're clicking that cookie, big time. You're mining that cookie. And you're building a points, you're investing in multi-clicks, whatever, until you start getting to like, whatever, the bakeries. And then you, it starts, creating cookies for you that's basically what this game is is that you're setting up your ai in such a way that they can clear the missions without you and that becomes the most optimal the most time efficient thing in the game is that you don't have to search for partners to clear stuff you don't even have to play the game you can just leave Which the game on in the background and the ai clear stuff for you and that's the unfortunate part is there's Will you take that, this that's one? it. The optimal farming way. is to just is to just have built AI. This is not even a good team for this mission, by the way. But anyway, you sit here <laughs> and you don't you don't play the game. So some the last seven thousand or so quests that I cleared, I didn't play. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't play. I just let it AFK and do its stuff. And the game has great music and everything, but. None of the fights are satisfying. And the AI just do everything for you. So I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit of this, but but this is effectively what I was doing for the last seven thousand missions. Is that it was so unsatisfying to fight enemies, to actually bother fighting enemies. I did some solos of stuff, I did some speedrun attempts and whatnot, uh, which was probably the most fun I had in the endgame. But it's not like content in the game, it's me literally nerfing myself to do stuff. And that's what people have been doing, is that they've been doing no equipment runs, no, no this, no that runs, solos, because there's not really anything to do. So back to my point about cookie clicker, is that you're clicking, you're clicking, you're clicking, you're getting all these cookies, your points, whatever, your upgrades, and at a certain point, you don't actually play this game anymore. You don't click to get your stuff anymore, your points. You have automated farms, uh, bakeries, whatever, to bake more cookies for you. You don't do anything, you don't manually do anything in the game anymore. And it's such a strong parallel to this game. Because your manual farms are just low-level quests, lower than, you know, the end bosses, lower-level quests. And just a note on that front, is you can still set up your teams to AFK clear all the quests in the game. So all the quests in the game, so Proto Bahamut, the, the last fight in the game, you can do it for Piet A, uh, second last fight in the game. I've done it for, I've done it for Piet A myself. The Nahillas, um... You can AF play clear all of them. And it's it's boring. But that's it. It's most it's the most efficient way. And then you go you, you'll queue it up and you just do something else for an hour. 
And just like Cookie Clicker, you have it, you open your browser, you don't actually have to click. The, the bakery clicks for you, basically, whatever they call it. Uh, it's been too long, but that's besides the point. Now, the good part. So, that's that's wrapping up my ranting. Here's, here's the good part. The game is incredibly well polished. Incredibly well polished. Probably one of the best polishes I've seen in a long time on any games. Uh, fights. The first time you fight, first few times you fight a lot of these bosses, especially when you're under gear, it feels good. It feels good. But then even even AFK at the end, like it's nothing. You don't, you don't do anything. But the first time you fight these bosses, they're fresh. They each have different unique move sets. Uh, some of them are more cinematic. Some of them are more intense. So uh, like actual just back and forth fighting. Uh, I've, I've seen I've seen quests where people. We passed the dragon trial. I've seen quests where people die ten times, and you actually lose the quest. So fights can you could actually lose fights early on in the game's launch. Uh, but here we are about a month later, and you're never gonna lose a fight because everyone's too built. And there's no content that actually requires building anything. <clears throat> so there you go. Uh, fights were really well designed. I very much enjoyed playing through story. Story was about 15 hours for me without including chapter zero. Um, my average day is about 20 hours or so of AFK farming and then four hours of menuing at Sierra. So that's what my average day looks like in this game. If that, want, if that means anything for you. Um, but yeah, playing the main story, going through the quest the first time, even after hitting crowd difficulty, they dropped four new fights on you, four new brand new bosses that you haven't seen before uh, in, the, in the game, in crowd difficulty. So there's still stuff to unlock even in the, late, uh, the later parts of whatever you're clearing. And and it will, there was a lot of fun in each of the fights. I would say that most fights were enjoyable, or all the fights were enjoyable at least in their first clear. Uh, they were well positioned. The story is a little bit short, but you, it's all me. You're you're fighting. You're not really dealing with tons of little um, tons of little mobs here and there constantly. You, you get to fight pretty much con one after the next. You're you're dealing with bigger enemies, elites, bosses, things like that. I'd say they did a good jo sto uh, job on all the bosses in the game. The story itself is power of friendship. You know, it, it's been done before. It's Grand Blue Fantasy or Dragalia Lost. It's always been like that. And I think that's fine. The Generally, the UI tends to be good. Uh, you can save, You can save loadouts. You can do a bunch of stuff. You can save entire party loadouts from when you farm. Want to switch to certain content? Uh, so I feel like in general they've done good with the UI. Obviously, as I mentioned, I spend around two to four hours a day menuing at zero. It's terrible. It's not fun. It's not fun. That part really needs a big overhaul and ASAP. <laughs> The music in this game is great. The visuals in this game are wonderful. Anime style. They, it really felt when I was going through the towns the first time each, and even like right now, if everything felt handcrafted, as they, as if they did everything manually themselves. Uh, the, maybe they had an asset pack. I don't know. I can't tell. I don't know my asset packs, but it really feels like they, they crafted this. They crafted each city, and there's two big cities, each of them very different, uh, wonderful sights and everything, fun to run through. And if you notice, while I was running through, uh, this is the this is really where it was elevated to a a triple A game for me, is that every character in in this game has a voice line. Found anything you like? There's voice lines for everybody and oh, just about everybody in this game as you walk by them English Japanese the voice the voice acting was Overall very good in this game. I know early on the reviews they were saying oh, I fucking hate this localization I'm gonna give it a negative review on Steam after two hours Anyway, don't listen to those reviews. 
Uh, the localization was fine. There are people that are bilingual that are saying they totally understand why they made these choices for the localization. It gives it more heart instead of just a Google Translate uh, where you lose the joke type of thing. So... Might be useful. Uh, so each, so all these characters in the world, they have voice lines, you walk up to them, you can hear, hear what they're talking about. Now, they, they repeat the same voice lines, whatever, but the fact that they actually bothered is impressive to me. And you have 19 different possible characters, and each of them has unique voice lines for different part of the story. So whoever you decide to play in the story, you get voice lines for that character, which is great. It's really awesome. And there are different voice line combinations depending on certain characters. They interact in the middle of fights. And you get unique voice line interactions between them. Which is super awesome. Which is why I kept the game in English so I get to hear when I'm playing with different characters that I haven't played. Uh, I get to hear the unique the unique interactions. Uh, and I thought all of these things were wonderful. So you still hear new interactions between characters. That I've never heard before. And... So the game had a lot of potential, so my yeah. background, I, as I mentioned, I didn't play Grand Blue Fantasy, but I played Tregalia Lost, which was another Psy Games gacha game. It was a mobile ARPG, and I want to say that it's probably the best mobile game I've ever played back in the around the first anniversary. Before Okada really took over the game, it was amazing. I could not get enough of it. And it was similar thing. It was, it was five minute fights. And it's the same here, is that my fights were 5-10 minutes when I was first clearing, and then they come down to about a minute now. Uh, but similar aspect where you're farming weapons, you're getting some equipment, you're building up your characters, you're doing the same quests over, but they felt so satisfying in Dragalia Lost. They don't feel satisfying here. I don't have any interest in running Proto Bahamut again. I don't need materials from him, so there's that too, but I don't have any interest in running Proto Bahamut again. It's a scripted fight. You dodge like three things and he dies. So, Dragalia Lost, the five Master High Dragon Trials were all incredible experience, and I would play them hours and hours and hours a day. And I'm hoping, because I see the potential in this game, I really hope that Lucifer, and then they, with Lucifer they add new difficulties, um, and actually have fights that challenge people, even with the tip-top gear that you can get, uh, it challenges you. And here's the, here's the part that worries me a little bit, is because Tregalia Lost was a live service online mobile game. This game is meant to be playable offline, so anything that anything they put in the game has to be doable by a single player with three AI. That's the part that worries me: is that uh, if they if they don't want to invest enough time in the AI, then they just make the fight easier, and that's it. We're not going to get a good fight. I wish there was content that was dedicated to online play more, but anyway, I won't get into it there. That's all to say the game is is extremely fun for at least the first or the early bit I'm, I'm not I don't regret the money I spent I don't regret the time I spent um, but man they need some more polish or they need to really fix their end game the I should say not more polish they need to fix their end game because right now you sit here doing low level quests like uh, generally I've been doing Nazar Bonjou here are the details be on your way so generally I've been doing this quest and you just sit here doing these low level quests just to get your extra t your extra tokens and your curios and this and that to trade in for a chance to get an upgrade and then after 8000 quests I haven't gotten an upgrade so go figure and that's it I sit here and I do this over and over and over and over and over Come. What? Yes. The course of battle is decided in a single moment. Of course they're not I'll tell you what's decided in a single moment. Launch. I'm starving. It's about to get real. When the going gets tough, your time's up now, punk. So this is not the team I normally run for this. There you go. You get an example of them not killing. But let's say we kill in general. It would be about 20 seconds, and that's it. Just farm this over and over and over. So normally I would not run Narmina for this at all. You 
But yeah, your optimal places to farm are the lowest, are low tier missions because they're just so much faster to clear and they still give you the same resources anyway. And then you sit there at Sierra menuing and then you sit oh, there at Zappa the looking through Which all the junk that he gives you. Complete. And then you sit there in overmasteries and just roll garbage over and over and over again. Without any... There's no path that a player can take to actually optimize their characters. If they said, oh, you want a supplementary V+, okay, go do this quest. And it's a list of a bunch of bosses to clear and collect, or materials to collect, whatever it is. I don't care. But there's no path for me to do anything besides just farming these shitty quests over and over and over again. So their endgame loop definitely needs work because there's no satisfying... First of all, there's no satisfying quest to clear. And even if there was, it's not optimal to run it. So they need to make something that's optimal to run or a, that's actually fun to do, or have it have it that there's a path for me to actually take to optimize the character. And then there's going to be people that say, well, they didn't want people to finish the game that quickly. But it's not meant to be a live service game. It's not meant to be something that, you know, you're trying to hold players back for a whole year while you release content. At least based on the roadmap, that's not the case. So it's very understandable that players if they buy a single player game even if it's on even if you're playing online in this game it's very normal that players without in a non-stamina system or anything like that want to go and optimize their characters if you've ever played diablo games if you're like me and you played a diablo type game uh path of exile uh diablo 3 diablo 2 i'm not going to call it diablo 4 because it's garbage or diablo immoral also garbage but most of these games People love just grinding stuff, and they have extra free time, they're gonna go grind. Until they get the stuff they want, the drops they want. Uh, and then Diablo, like, uh, sorry, the last one I played was Diablo 3. There were ways to reroll pieces of equipment. There were ways to trade up. There were things that as you actually went and did stuff, uh, you got resources that you could use to re-roll a piece or transfigure a piece or transmute a piece into a different piece uh, so you could get your sets and things like that. All of these types of things are missing in this game. So, my all my supplementary V plus damages are for nothing in this game. Let's just pull up this character. So all of these supplementary V plus that I have, I like I said, it's three per character, and I'm at the point where I, I have so many of them. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 34 of these and I need a maximum of 12. So what do you do with the extra ones? Well, you don't really do anything with them. You just delete them <laughs> Or you just leave them in your inventory like I did So it's these types of things that other ARPGs have actually done something with at least in my experience is that I can Maybe smash these together so I can put five of these together or ten of these together and make one plus one something like that and then at there, that's where you start getting into maybe sy systems that people want to interact with. Because even if I don't directly get it as a drop, at least there's a path to it. Because I know the rates for these are not that bad. I get them regularly. Then there's a path to what I want to do to min-max, to optimize. But there isn't one right now. So as I showed, I'm 10,000 quests in on a little bit more now. 10,000 quests in. And I, I have a single one. And I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel where I'm going to get another one. And there you have it. So that's my 10,000 quest review for this game. Um, I'm going to be, I'm obviously going to be playing for Lucifer, Lucifer when he drops. I'm going to, I'm looking forward to that. I hope they're, they're cooking, they're cooking something good. And uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you had fun. I'm sitting here at just under 600 hours in this, or sorry, um, 550 hours in this game. On Steam, I have a, quite a bit more because I did a lot of saves coming. So, to give you an idea, my Steam is showing currently 576 hours. So, there's a 20-some-odd hour difference in that to give you an example of how much I've save scummed in this game. 
because again, it's RNG and I, I'm just looking for specific things because they, they, they're much lower drop rates from CRO and that's it, that's all I'm doing is is RNGing stuff. And there you have it. So that's the end of my review. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe button. Go to the comments, complain about how you didn't get a supplementary V in 300 hours, even though you've only cleared like 50 quests, because that seems to be a common thing to see on Reddit for some reason. Somehow you only cleared 50 quests in 100 hours, I don't know how that happens, but it happens. So, um, there you go. We're, this is, remember this is only about launch Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Hopefully they, they cook and we get some good updates. Uh, but right now, launch date, the end game is not it. It's not it. All right, see you next time.